girl this turn, which would wipe out his entire uh, creature base, but that would just leave Nissa in play. That's right. Yeah, it's interesting as well, because if you're sitting in Seth's seat, remember they, of course, looked at the deck list and such. Glugowski actually has both of his Murderous Riders, the one he cast before and the other one in hand. He doesn't have any more of those. He only plays two, so... If you're in Cessna, you probably think it's pretty likely that you get to keep Nyssa. Mm -hmm. And it does look like that's actually the case here, as Glugowski's decided to run out Mayhem Devil rather than kill Nyssa straight away. Ooh, the Frilled Mystic draw. Hello, that can help protect Nyssa. Yeah, and, and this, uh, this is a bit of a gamble for Piotr. He's thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to get my Mayhem Devil down. You don't have really that many ways to deal with it, and if I can start to get a... Uh, uh, sacrifice chains going, then this can be you know very powerful at sort of overwhelming your your animated lands, possibly killing your Nissa. But it does give uh, the window to Seth to untap his mana and now protect that Nissa from the Murder Rider in hand. That's right, and that really is the name of the game for Seth Manfield's deck. He wants to get Nissa, or as we saw earlier, a Nightpack Ambusher, something down that he can protect that'll give him continued advantage. It's interesting because both of them are actually similar. They both make three threes every turn if left unchecked. Right. And that's what's happened here. So one of the other benefits to this line of play from Piotr is that he does get to go searching with Trail of Crumbs here on end step. And we'll see if he finds anything. But uh, he has fallen woefully behind here. And with Seth having drawn Frilled Mystic to keep Nissa around, it's going to be extremely difficult here for Glugowski to come back. Yeah, I mean, this position is fairly disastrous for Glugowski at this point. You know, Nissa's on seven. Seth has tons of untapped mana in order to uh, to counter a hard removal effect like Murderous Rider on the Nissa. He has two forests that he can just protect. And Canister's down to seven life. Yes. And th this, this board alone represents lethal damage. Witch's Oven. So here, the Witch's Oven has to be at least a little bit interesting that Seth's considering, okay, what, you know, how much does this matter? But at the same time, the big issue for Canister is he doesn't have enough mana to really use Witch's Oven to sacrifice anything to then do things with Trail of Crumbs and, and whatnot. Like, he has the Mayhem Devil, but, but not enough actual resources to do a lot of explosive things in a single turn with it. And Seth does not take the bait, keeps the Frilled Mystic up, and is going to be able to stop the Swift End for Murder's Rider. You can see Canister. He just knows that Seth has some way to answer this... Uh the swift end, but he's just going to pass the turn back. And if you're sitting in Seth's seat, I think you just say, sure. He could run out Growth Spiral, but that would prevent him from playing Frilled Mystic. Oh, looks like he's going to. Well, he does still have the Mystical Dispute up, thanks to the Paradise Druid. So he can Does that work here? Oh, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the, going to be able to counter Swift End <coughs> thanks to the, the only two mana available for uh, Ganister. Wow. Yeah, for some reason I thought the Goose would help there, but you're right, that does not get the job done. So Seth actually able to play Gross Spiral and leave up Mystical Dispute. He just kind of has it all here. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is, I think, just going to be the game here. There is some blocking that can be done, some some ovening that can be done. But the inevitability is on Seth's side. Yeah, I don't I don't really you know, he can take out the Paradise Druid with this Mayhem Devil ping. There, I mean I suppose there is a world in which Canister's able to block here, but that, that with the Paradise Druid gone, even a Massacre Girl doesn't clear the board. Oh right, the one time. It's actually a clear. fairly key uh, little element here. <coughs> See what he draws at the growth spiral. That's not going to do it. Not going to matter. There's a quench, double quench as well, although he only has the one blue mana source currently. So it's just time to put the pedal to the metal for Seth Manfield. Three, three, threes. This is a lethal attack. It will prompt something from Glugowski, whether it's a block or. Yeah, Mayhem Devil has to jump in front of Forest. I don't think he can afford to jump block. We see a shake of the head there from uh, from Glugowski. He knows this is a really, really bad spot. He can turn the goose into some food with Witch's Oven. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Use Mayhem Devil to keep Nissa who shakes the world off of ultimate, but that's the least of his problems, especially when you look at his hand. 
He's got three lands and a beanstalk giant in his hand, so I guess he needs to go digging with Trail of Crumbs. Make it find... He can't find another Murderous Rider, and even that's not enough because he's just de you know, dead to the pressure on the board. This one has not gone well for Gogowski. He finds a forest with his trail. I mean, the biggest issue here is just, you know, Seth was able to accelerate out and force uh, over the course of two turns, over the course of effectively one cycle of uh, Glagowski's mana, two significant threats that generate more threats in the form of the Nightback Ambusher and then the Nyssa. Glagowski chose not to use his second Murderous Rider, wanted to get the, uh, the Mayhem Devil down, uh, but was just not ever able to, to really get the position back, and this Nyssa has just dominated him. Right, either way, the Quench is going to take care of things and leave the board clear, so Golgowski's going to have to scoop him up. And that is Seth Manfield picking up game number one. Everything went according to plan, and just as you outlined, it was hinged on that Paradise Druid on yes. turn two. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that, that Seth was able to uh, accelerate out, you know, not, not just threats, but threats that, that represented additional threats, because even if... Uh, you know, Canister had you know, used his second Murder Rider on that Nissa, it would have left a 3-3 in play, and I think that was part of his thought process. Murder Rider here is just not quite good enough, um, but ultimately, you know, he ended up getting, being pretty heavily punished by, for not using it because Nissa ended up just generating so many threats, and his Mayhem Devil he chose to play that turn didn't do nearly enough to take the game back. Seth, Hemming and Hine over whether to bring in Sorceress Spyglass here. Or and you see that Canister does not seem happy. He is not happy. He's shaking his head. I don't know if you caught it earlier, but he kind of hit himself on the head like, hey, hey, hey. I think maybe he mistapped his mana slightly there on that last turn or something like that, a, a smaller mistake. But he does not seem thrilled with the way that that first game went. And it's hard to blame him. It was He really never got himself into that game. Yeah, I feel like there were a number of decisions he could have made differently that at least would have caused the game to play out significantly differently. The, the most obvious one, I think, is his choice to play Mayhem Devil rather than playing Swift End to kill Nyssa. That just left Nyssa in play the entire game. She just completely dominated the game. Uh, when he did finally decide to pull the trigger on Swift End, it had been long enough that you know, Seth had mana up. He was able to defend her, and uh, she just essentially single-handedly beat him by, by animating lands. All right, game number two incoming here. We're in our first quarterfinal match here in our top eight. But we are playing double elimination, so we've got a lot of magic to bring you over the course of the day. We're super happy that you decided to join us. And let's see how game number two goes. Can Seth Manfield advance further and knock Piotr Gogowski down in the lower bracket? Or is it going to be Fyodor fighting back here in game number two and giving him a run for his money? I do want to point out something interesting in uh, Golgowski's opening hand. Two copies of Lovestruck Beast. This is a card that is typically in the sideboard of these decks against aggressive strategies. Seth's strategy is not super aggressive, but crucially it is uh, a deck that is based around counter magic and generally fairly mid-sized creatures. Lovestruck Beast is a relatively cheap threat that outsizes most of Seth's threats. So I think that Canister is, is under the, the, the plan here that, okay, well, you can't really kill the 1-1, one, one, you're playing blue-green, and uh, the 5-5 five, five is a cheap way that I can get something down that is bigger than your ambusher and uh, hopefully put the pressure on. He, I think he recognizes he can't try and play a long game like his deck typically does with casualties of war and this just uh, incremental advantage plan. He needs to end the game and not allow Seth the ability to just play this long game of counter magic. Seth didn't like his opening hand, so he's going to mulligan. This one has Growth Spiral, Frilled Mystic, Nissa Who Shakes the World, and Sorceress Spyglass. And the Sorceress Spyglass is largely for Witch's Oven. We've mostly seen that as the use in, the, uh, in this particular matchup. Uh, I, be I believe you, uh, you can name the Cauldron Familiar because yeah. it is an activability from the Graveyard, but crucially, Trail of Crumbs is a triggered ability. So that, as their primary advantage engine, is not something you can shut down with the, uh, the Sorcerer Spyglass. Yeah, we did see Cauldron Familiar named yesterday. Well, he just put a Mystic at the bottom with his, uh, with his, <laughs> his mulligan, so I expect that one will go to the bottom, too. Phil doesn't want this one, either. Heart's Desire kicks things off for Glagowski. Does he have anything on turn two? Another one. Sure. Ooh, two things and a Witch's Oven. Okay, so good start here for Piotr as he 
is using up all of his mana in the early stages. And uh, not a bad draw there at all for Seth. He finds Temple of Mystery, which he can put into play with the Grow Spiral. Which will allow him to play Fabled Passage untapped, uh, as an untapped land the following turn. That's right. But uh, I, and now we're seeing the, the sideboard plan that uh, Pyotr is trying to get into action here with the Lovestruck Beast. Jeez, it, it looks now, good. I, yeah, I, I have to say, I, I'm really impressed by this particular uh, this particular plan because Piotr is getting significant pressure on. Sethsec wants to sit back and hold up counter magic, and well, now there's seven power in play. He's dead in just a couple of attacks and has nothing to answer it. You know, he is sitting here with a reactive card to specific situational stuff in the form of Sorcerer's Spyglass, and then counterspell Nissa. He's going to have to settle for tap land here, leave up Sinister Sabotage. That's just not what you want to be doing when you're behind on board. And, and frankly, you know, a lot of players uh, expected this field to be very heavy on decks like Sacrifice and Jeskai Fires and not on aggressive decks. And frankly, that's a big part of the reason that the trio of Seth, Brad, and Javier chose to play this flash deck. They said, okay, we don't think there's going to be a lot of Embercleave, not a lot of aggressive decks. And Piotr has chosen with his sideboarding strategy uh, to sort of morph as much as possible into an aggressive deck, and we're seeing why that is so effective against Seth's strategy in this game. This is really interesting. Seth is deciding if he'd like to keep a Paradise Druid on top of his library, perhaps looking to play Nyssa, then play the Paradise Druid and have it be a somewhat unassailable blocker. Yeah, the, the argument for that, I think, is that it allows him to have two three threes the following turn mm -hmm. um, and can just chump block the Lovestruck Beast and protect his Nyssa or his exactly. life total. I expect that we'll see Piotr ignoring the Nyssa with his attack and just going straight for Seth's face because Seth's at eight. Okay, here it is. Nyssa who shakes the world hits the battlefield. This is the big turning point. If Seth is going to win this game, this is how it starts. Fire up this forest, play Paradise Druid. It has Hexproof while on tap, so Piotr will not be able to kill it. That basically guarantees a block on the Lovestruck Beast kind of wherever it goes. And then as you said, he gets to untap and he could have two three threes, which could double block the Lovestruck Beast or at least interact better. I saw a head shake there from Seth. I'm not sure why. Piotr does have this Mayhem Devil in hand, which you know, crucially mm. can't target the Hexproof Paradise Druid, but can... Uh, do a lot of work at just getting in damage to end the game, and Seth is not really playing a deck that's well equipped to deal with it. We did see a single copy of Kenrith's Transformation in the sideboard, which he did not choose to bring in. Um, so he actually cannot get that off the board outside of, I believe, perhaps a Singleton Aethergust. Oh, no, there's actually the, the, the others in the main deck. So it's only Aethergust, which only kind of delays the effect of that card unless he has Counter Magic backup as well. By the way, chat figured out what, what uh, Seth was... Oh, he didn't he, attack he for three with his forest. Yeah, he didn't get in. That free vigilance attack. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, th this is even though these players have been in high pressure situations before. You know, this is still a very high pressure event. And uh, Mayhem Devil is going to put Seth under a lot more pressure than he already was. There's a frilled Mystic off the top of the library. He's got two of them on the bottom of his library, but uh, there's still a few left. So he can Spyglass the Oven. Mm -hmm and at least stop the Mayhem Devil from getting completely out of hand just every turn. Does force a response from Piotr if he wants to use his oven. That's right. Yeah, the timing on these type of cards, going back to Pithy Needle, is kind of interesting. It goes on the stack. If Piotr says, sure, it resolves, then as it enters the battlefield, Seth chooses the name. Therefore, once it's on the battlefield, it's too late to activate, you can't respond, so you just have to do it, not even knowing what Seth is gonna name, even though it's kinda obvious here, I suppose. I guess there are two guild there are, on the Goose. battlefield, yeah. But at any rate, it does force Piotr to decide now, not uh, not knowing yet what Seth is thinking about. And it does look like it's gonna be Witch's Oven, and it looks like Piotr says, okay, I'm not even gonna bother. He still does have ways to sacrifice things with Gilded Goose and such. Now he is going to attack, even though he could lose one of his forests and not have a great block for the beast, he, he would be pretty happy getting rid of that Mayhem Devil. So yep. He'll send that in, and then he gets to leave up Frilled Mystic. This does get interesting.
And I think that from Piotr's perspective, <coughs> he just wants to go into combat. He doesn't want to give uh, the opportunity for Seth to possibly play a Freld Mystic to counter something and then also block. Yeah. Because uh, Does he, just he is in a situation, I believe he may just have to play this to block. Right. It certainly would put him in a good position if he could double block the Lovestruck Beast, trade for the Mayhem Devil, only take two, and perhaps leave himself alive. Two, two from the Gilded Geese as well. His life total is going to be very low regardless. But the fact that there are the two Gilded Geese in play does mean that uh, Piotr can just, for zero mana, uh, sacrifice those foods for mana and kill the Frilled Mystic. Right, just to make sure prevent it from being able to block. Oh, good point, good point. Hang on, it looks like he's going to go ahead and yep. chump block Lovestruck Beast and try to trade with the Mayhem Devil. Seth Manfield recognizing that the Mayhem Devil is a source of damage that he cannot interact with currently. Right. And it will kill him over the next turn or two. So he needs to get that off the battlefield. And Kwiatkowski is going to start activating Gilded Geese here to get in for extra damage while he still can. Ooh, this is going to be very, very close. Seth Manfield facing a good draw here from Glagowski. I, I mean, the, the thing here is this is actually two of the forests for Seth, too. He chose to animate forest rather than Temple of Mystery. Mm. So even if he draws Hydrate Crisis, it isn't even that big because he only has a breeding pool for a sort of bonus mana. Right. He snaps off that Frilled Mystic. Anything that went on the yeah. stack is going to get countered there. Just finds an island. And also, of course, that does protect the Sorceress Spyglass. And he's going to continue to attack. Does not want to attack with the Frilled Mystic as he does not have Vigilance. And he's considering leaving an island in his hand as an unknown card to Kukovsky. It Worth noting, Nissa's on eight. Oh, yeah. I mean, Seth Hello. is at two life here. So the attack from Piotr next turn can get him down to one. Guaranteed right now. Because there's only two blockers. Lovestruck Beast gets chumped. One of the one ones gets blocked. One gets through. However, Seth has Nissa. Oh, but that's going to be this game. <laughs> <laughs> and with the island coming down, you know, there's no uh, no possible counter for it. And even if there were, there's the Gilded Goose. So, yeah, the, uh, the cat is going to get the job done in the uh, the least combo we have fashions. Just the, that's the, right. the good old-fashioned way. One activation and that will do Scratch it. you. <laughs> yep. And Seth Manfield gets the bad news. A nice little draw there from Glagowski. But the truth is, Seth was way behind that game. Yep. He, he was scratching his way back in. But he did. He was in one of those positions. Oh, he got scratched right out. <laughs> yeah, he did. He needed uh, things to go well for him while also things going poorly for Piotr. He needed him to draw a bunch of lands yeah. in a row. What I'm really interested in is how Seth chooses to sideboard here. Now that he saw the Love Struck Beast coming in, how does he feel like he needs to sideboard? Also, he is on the play. Does, does he want to uh, change things at all, given that fact? You know, the Sorcerer Spyglasses we, we saw, it was not very effective last game. I mean, it did shut down the oven, but the oven wasn't really doing very much. And he ended up just dying to Love Struck Beast. And I, I, you know, will we see him board in his own copies of Love Struck Beast in, in order to try and defend himself? Or perhaps the Kenrith Transformation? I wouldn't be surprised. That Lovestruck Beast had a profound impact on that game. I mean, he did get attacked for seven before he had anything on right. the board. And, you know, you can't really play as a pure counter-reactive controlling deck with situational answers when your opponent's attacking with five fives. Is he just going to, you know, hope that Lovestruck Beast doesn't do what it did last game? It is... Also worth noting, it is much harder for uh, for Canister to aggro him down when Seth is the one on the play. So we do see that he decides, okay, I'm going to stick with my proactive strategy. I'm not going to try and uh, respond to your love struck piece with my own because of the fact that I am on the play, and it means that I'm going to be able to get my plans online first. Here's a nice hand for Manfield. You can go Temple, untap land, grow spiral into Temple, and have that four mana on turn three. He even has a Frilled Mystic. 
The dream, of course, is if you have an IPAC amateur as well, as it puts your opponent in a really tough position, trying to decide which one they want to play around. Here's Calder Familiar to kick things off for Lugoski. How does his hand look? It's, it's a little awkward. He, he has the... Uh his three cats, which is not really what you're looking for. They're not very high impact. Um, he has a, a duress, which is pretty solid. But if, uh, you know, right now it'll only hit a growth spiral. And he only has one black mana. So at the moment, he's only going to be able well, that, that changed. <laughs> but at, the, at that time, he was only going to be able to play uh, a single spell per turn. If he does fire off the duress here, he'll be quite happy because it looks like Seth decided to go for Paradise Druid mm -hmm. rather than growth spiral and that means it's the only target left in hand here so seth says yep. all right you got me also knowing about the frilled mystic and very the rest big deal. of the cards being lands is really really big deal seth probably still priced into playing an untapped land here though even if his opponent knows about frilled mystic he has to make him respect it right? and it has to be a breeding pool to take damage because uh he can't play the, the castle vantress untapped because he doesn't have any actual islands yikes and that damage matters, especially, you know, against these these cats. They, you know, they plink away a little bit. And right now, you know, he, it's not like Seth's going to block with his no. Paradise Druid. They're getting in. There's a Love Struck Beast off the top of the library, but Glagowski in a pretty good position here. Doesn't really need to do a whole lot. He can, he can go maybe even just play another Cauldron. Wow. Fire. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Look that, at this. Seth is going to regret that, I think. We're going to see the possibility of a Love Struck Beast coming down this turn. He frilled Mystic, pulled the trigger just to prevent a single point of damage and get that Cauldron familiar off the board. But now it's a much bigger creature, and Seth has no more answers. Krakowski is going to be happy to see that. And there's the Love Struck Beast. Remember, Cauldron Familiar counts as well. He's even got another one in his hand, so that beast is going to be able to start attacking. And Seth is just flooding out now. Yeah, that, that Phil Mystic play to me seems very questionable because there, you know, Seth ha has seen that Piotr is on this Love Struck Beast plan. He has seen that there's a lot of relatively impactful three-cost things, even if there's a, a Thrashing Brontodon, right? That's something you can do with your Phil Mystic. And given that your hand is so action light, it feels like exchanging, you know, not getting the opportunity to exchange your Frilled Mystic with your opponent's play that turn just puts you in a very awkward position. And now we see Love Struck Beast getting a chance to come in. And there's another one in hand now. Yikes. Back to back Love Struck Beast there for Piotr Glagowski. And that clicking sound you hear is him just spamming <laughs> something. Is Seth priced into double blocking and activating Castle Vantress? Oh God! You you, you saw that thought go I through think he his is. head. I, he yeah, I, I think he is. Yeah, I think I think he absolutely is. And this this is all off the back of his decision to play that Frilled Mystic as a blocker last turn. He just ambushed a Cauldron Familiar, and uh, the cat. You know, it had a, a big angry friend who's he's in love with that cat, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love struck by the kitty cat, and uh, right. Ooh, he's taking revenge on his poor fallen. Friend. Yeah. Are you a dog person or are you a cat person, Love Struck Beast? I think we know the answer here. I, mean, I can't think of any 1-1 one, one dogs. 2-2. Mm -mm. Two, two. Yeah. Which clearly indicates the dogs are better. <laughs> <laughs> Love Struck Beast number two comes down, one. and Seth has a fist full of land. He can do nothing. This game has gone from bad to worse yeah. here. Killing that cat was Seth bad luck. Go. Yep, so he's going to play Fabled Passage, crack that, get another land out of his library, and then activate Castle Vantress. But in the meantime, he's taking huge amounts of damage. I, mean, I feel like Seth really felt like he wasn't going to get a good use of that Frilled Mystic because Canister would play around it because it was face up. But still, he just, per, you know, even, even the, the threat of the Frilled Mystic in hand is going to at least buy you time, and your opponent just has two 1-1s one in play. Right. Uh, he pulled the trigger on the Frilled Mystic early, and it has not gone well, not gone well since then. So we're going to see Castle Vantress activated, and is it too late for Chemister's Insight? Absolutely. He's going to put that on the bottom of his library. He does need cards, but he needs them now. He can't pay for them. I mean, one of the crazy things here, too, is that Canister hasn't even drawn a third land. He has just been able to... to uh, uh, fourth land. Sorry. John passed his fourth land, his third land. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't drawn a fourth land, yes. And, uh, yeah, he, you know, if he were sort of choked on his ability to actually play spells as a result, uh, you know, he 
could be in a rough spot, but he was just able to resolve that love struck beast that has just been beating down this whole time. So what is it exactly that Seth is looking for at this point? Because he just put two night pack ambushers on the bottom of his library. He's taking he's going down to two here. I mean it must be Nissa, because Nissa is something that he could play that will continue to generate more ways to keep him alive. But I mean right now he's looking for the concede button because this game is over. Yeah, this one is done and well. There was a Nissa ultimately on top of the library, but that's going to do it. Piotr Glagowski is going to win his quarterfinal match against Seth Manfield. Two games to one. Nice work, Piotr. Jun Sacrifice getting the job done against Simic Flash this time around. And it has been an emotional roller coaster for Seth Manfield this whole tournament. Yeah. And uh, he continues on the ups and the downs. This one's going to be a down to start his day. But he's not finished yet, so. Uh, We'll see how things go for, for Seth for the rest of the day. Yeah, so. and I, I do want to want to point out just how important the specific decision making for Canister and Cyborging was. Those Lovestruck Beasts won him both of the games after he lost game one to Seth's uh, strategy really coming together. That's right. And it really, boy, I got to say, you highlighted that 